stop being tricked and bamboozled by the Philadelphia 76ers media, Vegas, <laughs> everybody. Like, it's time for it to come to an end. We're headed towards the Orlando bubble, and the Philadelphia 76ers have the third highest chances in the East, according to Vegas, to win the championship this year. And I will say, I, I just don't understand that. The 76ers are the person on Instagram or Snapchat that looks really good when you, you know, when you first see, like, all right, you know, I'm going to give them a follow. I'm going to check them out. And we do it. We do it in the preseason polls. Like, oh, Philly on paper, they look great. They're huge. They got Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. But then you see the person in real life and it's like, that's, that, that's not what I thought it was going to be. The problem is, once you see that person, you get it, but we continue to fall for the Philadelphia 76ers and their potential and their high ceiling year after year after year, and we're doing it again headed into this bubble. I like the Bucks, Celtics, Raptors, and Heat all better than the 76ers, and I feel like they're more geared towards having the total um, ability on both ends in order to come out and have that real true championship formula. And the 76ers, while they are a defensive powerhouse and one of the best rebounding teams in the league, it just doesn't make up for the shortcomings that they have on offense. Well, that's easy for you to say. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are healthy. You don't know how the other teams are going to come back and whether guys are going to be in shape or not. Maybe the rebounding will make up for the fact that some guys are going to come back rusty and Philly will get extra possessions. So how do you know that down the stretch, our size, the health of our two stars, which we haven't truly had 100% in the postseason, how do you know that's not going to make up for it? I get that, sure. And when the 76ers are rolling, they really look like that juggernaut that we all expected them to be and continue to expect them to be whenever there's no basketball being played for whatever reason. But then the problem is we watched them play basketball. 29-2 and two at home this season, but was it 10-24 10 and, 10 and 24 on the road? So that level of Jekyll and Hyde just doesn't bode well in a neutral situation. Last I checked, we're playing in Orlando. We're not playing in Philly. I don't care if Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons are 150% healthy. That doesn't fix the issues on offense and how easy they are to guard. This is a team that was 18th in offensive efficiency this season and 21st in free throw weight. They're easy to guard, and they're going to become even easier to guard in the playoffs for teams that are elite defensively and can match their size. Simmons is going to get the Rondo defense. He's not going to be guarded at all in the half court. There is speculation about whether he's going to come into the bubble with an improved jump shot or not. He's going to have to prove that because when you're able to subtract a, a perimeter defender defensively and use that defender to shade, it's just a huge advantage that they're not going to be able to overcome in late game situations and against elite defensive teams. You have to beat people four times. This isn't beating the Lakers and everybody's happy about it. You're going to have to beat these teams four times in a week and a half. And you're not going to be able to do that if I'm able to not guard your best player until he steps below the foul line. I'm tired of you media guys and going to that lazy argument when it comes to talking about Ben Simmons and his jump shot. Besides his jump shot, he does everything else at an A-plus level, and we'll figure it out because we have guys who can stretch the floor. Uh, we'll agree to disagree. Uh, the fact that you do have people who are supposed to be able to shoot Josh Richardson has had an up and down season. To me, the true X factor is going to be Al Horford. Al Horford was brought in because... It has been shown that the effective stopper against Giannis, you have to have an extra big body to continue to stand in the paint. The Celtics did it a few years ago when they had Horford, and then Toronto went and got Marcus Gasol, and it proved to be effective for them in short spurts as well. So Horford is now in Philly, but it was really up and down as far as him being in the starting lineup before they benched him in February. Just the pairing of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid on offense is just way too awkward and it doesn't provide enough shooting and floor stretching for them to be effective. If this doesn't work out, I think this is the last you'll see of Brett Brown with the team. I think they'll move him first before they split Simmons and Joel Embiid up, but it really is my true feeling that Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are going to have to be split up eventually in order for them both to see what their true potential will be. If you think I'm being too pessimistic, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. But with the Nets being undoubtedly stronger next year, I just don't see what their prospects will be as far as being able to be true title contenders in the near future. That's just my take.